Hi, today we're going to talk about data and grading on EdSite. Now let's say you've created your assignment or your assessment, you've sent it to students, and now it's time for you to actually grade it and analyze how your kids are doing. Okay, so let's say I go into the report. I can automatically see how students are doing on the parts that have been graded, and I can also see how many points I need to go in and actually teach or grade. All questions that have one correct answer are automatically graded. It's just for questions that require teachers to read something, look at a drawing, do something that takes more of a subjective eye, that's where you're going to be responsible. So you can grade by student. I could open all. I could go through and see, okay, so Colleen Callie, let's see, so she's got, she's got this first part correct, second part not correct, first part correct, second part. Okay, so I'm noticing a trend. Okay, she got the descriptions correct, but again, that's supporting evidence wrong. And again, so I can see clearly for, for Colleen that we need to work on her use of evidence. Okay, but if let's say I don't want to go through it student by student, rather I want to look for trends by question and skill for all of my students. I can go through, select open all and see how did students do in general. Okay, so she got part A, yep, part B, no. Okay, Sarah got both and Franklin got both. So you can go through and do that deep dive in each question type. You can also choose to leave a comment. So let's click scoring and remarks. And I might put in here, Colleen. So now when she goes into her EdSite account, she's going to see a note. Great. So, this yellow line under here means that this requires teacher grading, so let's go ahead and skip there. I can press open all, and I can automatically see that there are, there is a range of responses. So let's go ahead and just do Franklin's right here. I can go ahead and read his, you know, what seems to be a nice thorough response. Let's say I've gone through this, he's done a fantastic job, I can actually pull up the rubric associated with this question type and give him scores based on that rubric. So let's say he got a two here, a three here, and a three here. This response was actually really fantastic. So we're gonna give it three out of three for each section, reading comprehension, writing, written expression, and knowledge of language and conventions. Apply, let's add a comment. Fantastic work. Apply. So now that score has been changed from a zero to a 10. You can go in and just change the score based on whatever you think it would be. But I, I find it's really helpful for students that if you've put a rubric in there to actually go in and use the rubric. Now let's say we've gone through, we've done all of our grading. We can go into the summary report to get more of a bird's eye view. I can go through and see what are the averages per question. I can see by looking at this that question four is one that I need to go over with the entire class. Or I can look at this based on standards. Let's see, okay, so these seem to be my highest standards here. L5.5 we're struggling with. So what's great about this view is that it allows you to see not just based on questions, but notice those common themes, those common standards that students are having trouble with across multiple questions. Let's say I want to export this into my CSV file so I can import it into my grade book. I can go ahead and save that and that's ready to then be uploaded into whatever grade book you use. That's it for our demo of grading your assessments. Uh, 
go ahead and check out some of our other videos and how-to documents for more information about how to set up your rubrics, how to leave comments, um, and everything else we went through. Thanks.